So hello fellow Earthlings, this is Earthling 6455463728 and I wanted to talk about Tom Green being on Joe Rogan's show the other day. I thought it was really interesting, it was nice to see Tom Green. Um, you know I didn't watch a lot of the stuff that he had, I knew he was a pretty quirky dude so I was kind of hoping that he was not going to be quite like that, like Jim Carrey has a tendency to be, or um, or that other comedian who died, where you couldn't you couldn't just have an ordinary conversation with him. Anyway, I was I was really glad to see that you could have an ordinary an ordinary straightforward conversation with Tom Green, and that was great. Um, I found that. It was in part, in a large part, a um, an interview of Joe Rogan, as it can tend to be unless, you know, it's a specific expert or something that Joe Rogan has on. But that in itself was still kind of interesting as well, because for one thing, I found out what Joe Rogan's fear is, and it's skydiving and probably heights as well because uh, they were talking about whether or not he's been high diving. He's like, no, no, I'm never going to do it. Um, he's like, I think I'll just get a contact high from somebody else doing it. I'm never going to do it. And apparently Tom Green had that same position as well. But when he was on the set of um, Charlie's Angels, he went, um, I guess, with the other cast members who were going to... Uh, skydive and he realized that he was the only person who was not going to skydive so I guess that got him a bit competitive and he figured okay I'm gonna go do it and I have to say I have to give him some props for that you know um, Joe Rogan has called out some people you know playfully for being kinda like a baby I think it was uh, this person who came on his show and the person said that they didn't like to eat vegetables, any green vegetables. And he's like, yeah, well, that's like being a baby. <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, Joe, if you're scared of uh, jumping out of a plane, that's probably a bit like a baby. Of course, yes, you can die. He had a story, of course, of some person who knew somebody else who died. But, and you know, I understand it's slightly different. You're much less likely to die on a plane. But at the same time, you are miles above the surface of the earth in a similar situation as to a parachute with a whole bunch of explosive liquid on board. So sometimes when I'm on the plane, it doesn't happen usually. But I've realized that at least at one time, that was what my thinking was. And I was like, what the heck am I doing here? Anyway. Joe has said a couple of times that it was Seth Green and the setup that he had at his house that really excited him into trying to have his program, his his own show. And, you know, it's kind of sad and interesting that that never happened for Tom Green, you know. He had a setup that basically invigorated Joe Rogan and one day he said, and I guess this was the beginning of the end, if not the end of him having this, because basically he had his own servers at his house and he had everything himself. It wasn't anybody else's thing. It was at his house um, where he had this thing set up and he had stuff screwed into the ceiling and he said it diminished the property values because he had such a a unique thing there but one day apparently he connected his uh, stream to somebody's MySpace account and he had like a million views and he was thinking maybe at the time oh my god that's so amazing well the internet service provider that he had uh, set up his system with there's a fee for those million views and the bill came up to forty thousand dollars and at the time apparently it 
he was he went to tears he uh, was in tears on the phone with the people telling them you know that he didn't know and he was sorry and whatever um, and he, I guess it, it started to become a thing where he wanted to monetize it he wanted to figure out a way that he didn't have to pay to do this thing that he liked but this thing that he liked paid him and I guess he couldn't find a way in the end so he just took everything apart but Joe and you know this is a, a similar story to things that happened with Apple Apple and maybe even Microsoft they wanted to make something like the iPhone a long time ago and I believe that they failed spectacularly I, I have to go back and listen to uh, the biography of Steve Jobs but I believe the technology just wasn't there yet um, it would have been too expensive and it would have been too slow to have like an iPad iPhone type device when they wanted to do it so it never came to fruition but I guess it's the same thing that happened with respect to to Joe um, like minus the part where he was trying to do it Tom Green tried to do it and I guess as you know from my business background I guess this is what you would call a second mover advantage he was inspired by the first person but I guess more than the usual second mover advantage where you can see where the other person went wrong the technology just caught up to the point where he didn't have uh, to do as much as Tom Green did and it didn't cost him because one of the things too that was interesting is that Joe always tells everybody hey start up your podcast start up your podcast and uh, what's his name Donnell Rollins was asking him when is this gonna pay and unfortunately Joe let it slip a while ago not this one with Tom Green but in another one and he was saying yeah you know this show has been on for like 10 years and I've only really been getting paid for four so I don't think he's really thinking it through when he's encouraging people to start their own podcast because it's a tough long haul to be going for six years for no payback that is tough that is really hard um, I don't think his friends might be that interested in doing something similar and especially now where the market's crowded you know who knows how long it's gonna take on another point and I know I'm getting away from uh, Tom Green a bit um, Tom was really gracious um, as Joe said that he inspired him to do everything that he's doing he said it a couple of times and um, I think it was just kinda sad but I guess Tom is starting back with his podcast but on another note um, Joe has these tests these antibody tests done at his house and I just saw I think it was a New York Times article where um, a bunch of people tested 14 kits I think it was and they <coughs> sorry one second here yeah so in the New York Times uh, there's a report of a group of scientists who tested 14 kits and unfortunately they came up with only three of them were reliable were reliably um, giving um, the proper results and worse yet apparently um, that was only I think in the case of the top three they were given 99% um, accurate um, readings but that's only after three weeks and I think the even the rest of them were giving 89 um, percent accuracy uh, with respect to calling a positive test positive but again only for when people had this thing for three weeks so unfortunately if this is to be believed and apparently they they were able to do it because they had a, a similar setup for Chagas disease um, 
but in that case I think it took something like a year but they worked with a lot of volunteers and they did the tests repeatedly because apparently the FDA uh, in the US is not testing these tests to see how good they are so and this is another thing this is what I would be expecting in one of his um, I think it is with Tom Green he was saying you know they found that so many people had uh, the antibodies and obviously so many people would have had COVID so maybe it seems as if uh, the actual hospitalization and mortality rate is really low so maybe they should you know just go ahead and and open everything back up is it that the hospitals currently have a problem joe are the hospitals saying that they're swamped with too many patients they have too many people on ventilators and you are saying because people are infected or a lot more people are infected than expected we should risk having more people in these hospitals where the people are overworked and it's crowded with people who have this disease is that what you're suggesting joe and you know there was a point in the in the podcast where tom green was asking joe if he was ever worried about the fact that he had such a a, a tremendous reach and that he might say the, the wrong thing and joe was like no you can't think about that so i don't think about it i you know don't listen to me kind of thing and i'm like i guess that's what you have to do joe in order to be able to function you can't really think about and in other podcasts you know joe has has expressed the idea that okay let's say you know a million people listen to you meaning the other person or they they listen to me what is that what does that even mean a million listeners a million views So I think that Joe doesn't really bother to try. And I mean, he said it also before. People have told him that they, I think it was was Peter Weinstein, was saying, you know, people have tattoos of your face on their arm. And he's like, I'm aware of that, but I can't really let it affect me because of what I need to do. And that sounded really weird. But um, I guess, yeah, you have to... If you're going to function and do what you need to do, you can't get lost in what possible effect you might actually be having, especially if it's something that you want to continue to do. I don't know. If it ever comes out that Joe had a very large negative effect, I'm pretty sure he probably would not want to know. Um, and it's probably hard to be even to attempt to try to control what effect that you have. You know, there was an episode of Futurama, I think it was, where there was a race of people. Bender was floating in in space. He's a robot. He's floating in space. And um, a race of microbes or people or whatever, they evolve on his body. And one evolves on one side, one evolves on the other side. And then he's trying to do nice things for them. And they don't turn out the way that he wants it to. And in the end, I suppose it became, um, is it an allegory for when, maybe that's why God stays out of our lives. Because when he tries to do a good thing, it ends up coming out bad. And maybe that's what Joe needs to do. Maybe that's what, what Howard Stern, maybe that's what the Pope, maybe that's what, the president of the United States of America has to do just not really think too much about the effect that you're having because you might just end up freezing but if you know I understand that Joe is not a robot he's a human being and I've made mistakes and whatever else as well but number one no matter what his tests say obviously um, we should probably continue to social distance because um, the amount, number of people that are swamping the medical uh, system across the world is obviously not a trivial thing. And just because there are more people potentially, and as these tests might say, they have a lot 
of false positives in most of the tests. And some of them might be from 5 to 15% false positives. And if you're using that to assume that all of these people have had um, COVID-19 or coronavirus SARS-2 and then they haven't and you're putting people's lives in peril because of faulty tests um, especially if you read the New York Times I don't know if Joe just doesn't get around to reading as much as he probably needs to um, especially again with respect to the idea that this is not all signs point to the fact that it's not a manufactured virus so anybody everybody who listens to Joe I think they should make sure and probably try and get a lot more reading done than Joe is able to do um, because of course he has these shows that last three however many hours a day I mean if you're gonna have this many shows that is time taken away from life that's time taken away from because he said like you know many times he'll say like I just had a show with this person or I'm going into a show with this other person and in two three hours Joe that is like and then he runs and he goes into sensory deprivation tanks and whatever else that's taking a lot of time away from other things that he could be doing so if you guys uh, follow Joe Make sure and do your reading on your own. Um, hopefully you won't be upset at me for saying that. But uh, you can wish me luck. So you can like or unlike, comment, subscribe, and or share. Peace.